parties. Okay, uh, let's start. Um, it's a great pleasure to have Hao Xu from uh, George August University of Gottingen to tell us about local modules embedded to Fusion 2 categories. Please. Okay, thank you. So I want to thank the organizer for the invitation to let me have the opportunity to talk about some recent work uh, on this uh, local modules in Fusion 2 categories. So, but before I dive into details, um, maybe it's beneficial to uh, show you this interesting periodic table. So, uh, can, can you see my uh, pointer? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so now we have a list. Uh, there are like two directions. So from if you if I go from left to right, each uh, each row the we are we are having mathematical structures with increasing categorical levels. So let let us assume we are over a base field of um, say complex numbers for simplicity, and we start with vector spaces. Then a linear category is a sort of structure we add in some extra coherence conditions and data. And two and linear two categories are uh, the structure we add in more coherence data on top of that. So the whole game is sometimes called uh, categorification. And the different rows here means I have categorifications of different algebraic structures. So if I start with uh, algebra over complex numbers, then a monoidal category over complex numbers is kind of like algebras, but categorified. So in, apart from objects, I also have morphisms and the morphisms also, they, uh, they can multiply together and we have some extra layer of coherence data, for example, associator and unitors to tell us how do we uh, make this algebra associative and unital. And similarly, we can categorify commutative algebras and what we get is a structure called uh, braiding. It's a braiding on top of monoidal structure and if furthermore, the spreading satisfy some extra coherence conditions, then we got the notion of symmetric monoidal category and so on. So let us look at this periodic table in, an, in another direction. So if we look in columns, um, from, from above to below, uh, we are increasing the level of commutivity. So what do I mean here? So if I start with a vector space, an algebra is just a vector space equipped with uh, multiplication and a unit satisfies the familiar coherence conditions. And commutative algebra, well, the Ekman-Hilton argument tells us that whenever I have two compatible algebra structures on the same underlying vector spaces, then you can show that these two algebra structures are in fact isomorphic and they are both commutative. So in this way, uh, we, we, get a, we get a procedure to going further downwards by just adding extra layer of algebra structures. So if I start with a second column, uh, I can put a monoidal structure on top of a linear category. What I get is, the monoidal category. Then if I put an extra monoidal structure so that such two such monoidal structures should be compatible in some way, then the result I get is equivalent to the traditional notion of a braided monoidal category. And it's a fact that if, if I put a third compatible monoidal structure, then three of them turns out to be equivalent and what I get is symmetric monoidal category. A similar game would uh, also be played in two categorical levels. So start with a two category, I put a monoidal structure on top of that. What I get is called a monoidal two category. 
Then I add another layer of monoidal structure. What I get is a braided monoidal two category. Furthermore, what I get is called a syliptic two category. And finally, when I have four monoidal structures compatible with each other, then it gets stabilized. And the structure I get is a symmetric monoidal two category. This periodic table is actually interesting in a lot of ways. So here I, I list, uh, I give you some dashed arrows. Let, let, let me explain. So what do they mean? If I start with an algebra, I can take uh, modules of that. So the collection of all modules form a linear category, which lands here. So that is what this red arrow means. And you, you can imagine actually the other red arrows is just the categorifications or higher algebra analog of this procedure of taking modules. Uh, what about these blue arrows going downward? So this means taking centers or on, on the level of vector space or categories, it means taking endomorphisms. So endomorphism, form an algebra. And if I have an algebra and take its center, right, it give me a commutative algebra. Similarly, if I have a category, it's endomorphism functors, they form a monoidal category by compositions of functors. And if I have a monoidal category, there's a notion called dream field center, which produced me a, a braided category. And if I have a braided category, there's a notion called Muga center that give me a symmetric category. So the similar constructions can be generalized to two categories as well. And we will see later how they are defined rigorously. Okay, there is a, a third family of arrows uh, denoted by these uh, brown arrows going just horizontally to the right. Well, this means taking local modules and I deliberately put three procedures together on one graph because in some sense, the, you know, each triangle commute in some sense. So let, let me just illustrate it in the most uh, simple cases. So if I have an algebra, uh, it's local module is bimodule. So I, I, I take bimodules over an algebra. It is not just a linear category, but it's also equipped with a monoidal structure just by taking a relative tensor product of modules. So this is how we get a monoidal category, but we can also start with the algebra and take its category of modules. And then I take endomorphism functors on that category. So the resulting category turns out to be equivalent to category of bimodules. Uh, we can also look at this other triangle. So if I start with algebra, I take its center, it gives me a commutative algebra. And then I can take modules of this commutative algebra. But since now I'm taking a commutative algebra, its module is not just a, a linear category, but it's also a monoidal category. And this monoidal category is, well, not exactly the same as category of bimodules, but they are more Italian equivalent. So, so in the sense that they are not like commutative, uh, but it's commutative in some higher more Italian sense. Okay, so that's enough for some uh, schematic talks. So, from now on, let's start with uh, rigorous definitions. So we start with fusion two categories. So this is a notion introduced by Douglas and Ruter. So they define a multi-fusion two category to be a monoidal two category whose underlying two category is finite semi-simple. And also we require the monoidal structure to be rigid, which means every object there exists a left U and a right U. If the monoidal unit is a simple object, then we call the multifusion two category to be a fusion two category. 
So this is, as I said, if I equipped with two monoidal structures which are compatible, then what we get is a braided, in this, in this case, a braided multifusion two category. And we also have selective multifusion two category and symmetric multifusion two categories in a similar manner. So maybe it's beneficial to have some examples at this stage. The most trivial or, but the most, uh, you know, fundamental example is two vec. So this is a fusion two category of finite dimensional two vector spaces. And actually you have two equivalent description related by the so-called uh, eilenberg watt theorem. So you can either consider object in this two category as finite semi-simple linear categories, and then you have functors and natural transformations, or you can consider it to be a Morita two category. So objects are algebras, and then you have bimodules between them. So it depends on which picture you look at, the symmetric monoidal structures are also different. So on linear categories, the symmetric monoidal structure is called the link tensor product or Cayley tensor product. And on the Morita side, it's just uh, the, the familiar tensor product of algebras. A more interesting example is follow. So let G to be a finite group and we take a focal cycle. And then we can cook up a uh, fusion two category. So it's, it should be the G graded finite dimensional two vector spaces. And then the four core cycle pi is to use to twist it, the higher associator called pentagon data. Well, there are also in the sense of uh, Eilenberg watts, you also have two equivalent pictures, one Morita serotic picture, one categorical picture. So you can either think of objects in this two vec G pi as G graded uh, linear categories, or you can think of it as G graded separable algebras. And then you have bimodules between them, or you have functor between them. So this Two category, its monoidal product is induced by convolution on, on, on group G. And the monoidal unit is given by VEC as a linear category graded on the unit on the multiplicative identity of G. Another example of fusion two category is representations of two groups. So a finite two group. So a finite two group, I mean, I have a two group and it's two homotopy groups are both finite. I can define the two category of finite dimensional two representations just by considering collections of two functors from this one point looping to two vec. And it is equipped with a symmetric monoidal structure, which is just pointwise inherited from two vec. So in details, if I have two G representations, the product, I first take the product of the underlying linear categories. I take the link tensor product, and then I need to have a new two group action. And this new two group action is induced by this diagonal uh, structure on the two group. This is just the same as a situation of one group representations. So in particular, if I just take a finite two group and view it as a, well, I take, I take finite one group and view it as a two group, which means there it's pi two is zero and pi one is the, the one group. Then, the, it's two representations is equivalent to another fusion two category. So this is a module categories over rep G. And it's a, the, the construction is 
has a name, it's called equivalentization or de-equivalentization depend on the structures, uh, the directions you pick. So it goes like this. So object in 2RepG, they are finite semi simple categories with a G action. And I have functors and natural transformations which are equivariant with respect to those G actions. On the, on the other hand, in, in this fusion two category, object are module categories over rep G. And I have module functors and module natural transforms between them. It is important to denote that uh, symmetric monoidal structures are different on these two sides. So on two rep G, the monoidal structure is given by, is induced by the lean tensor product. But on the right hand side, the symmetric monoidal structure is induced by relative the lean tensor product. So now I want to introduce a notion called centralizer. So it's actually a categorification of centralizer of an algebra, but it's like categorified twice. So we, we should start with a monoidal two functor, which goes between monoidal two categories, C and D. And an object in this two category, well, I have a, a, I have a triple. So I think of it as a half braiding, but half braiding twi uh, twisted by this F. So I will have an object which lies in the target and a half braiding B. So it, it goes from, so it will intertwine F and an image of something coming from C and it should do it in a natural way. So I need a natural isomorphism. Um, and then the the other the, the the other part of data the R matrices told me how do I relate it a uh, half ratings with product so I will have these coherence conditions that uh, need to be satisfied for these R matrices and one of the sense between half ratings they are. I will have underlying web morphism between objects, and then this there will be some compatibility conditions between these hard gradings and this web morphism. And well, uh, it will it will be uh, asked to satisfy some coherence conditions as well, which I do not have time to really uh, span out. But you can have an idea. So here. The coherence conditions are uh, written out in string diagrams. So I read from left to right and from up to down. Um, a two morphisms between half gradings is, well, you have an underlying two morphism which respect all of the coherence conditions that define it above. So they pack together to form a two category. And now I need to tell you the monoidal structure. Well, the monoidal structure is, well, kind of what you will expect. So I take the monoidal product of the underlying object, and then I need to define a new half braiding on this product. And this new half braiding is defined in this way. So I have a, I have this diagram, so which is built from uh, coherence data of X or coherence data of Y. Right, and the monoidal unit is given by the underlying monoidal unit uh, together with uh, canonical half braiding. And then, well, so decoupled um, showed that, so the monoidal centralizer we just see above, it form 
So if I am considering a monoidal functor between multifusion two categories, and then this monoidal centralizer is also multifusion. So in this sense, taking monoidal centralizer is pre uh, preserved in, in the among multifusion two categories. And if I consider just the identity two functor on the multifusion two category, then I recover the Oh yeah, so here C should be the Frank, the Frank C. So then I recover the notion called the Dreamfield Center. So Dreamfield Center of a two category, monoidal two category is a special case of monoidal centralizer. But it is an important case because in this situation I have a canonical braiding. So it's not just a multifusion two category, but actually a braided multifusion two category. So there is another notion called braided centralizer. So braided centralizer, well, every now monoidal structure is increased by, by one. So I'm considering braided two functors between braided monoidal two categories. And an object is what I call a half solipsis. So I will have an object X which lies in the target and the half solipsis is half of the solipsis you will draw for a full syllabic two category. And it will satisfy half of the coherence conditions for solipsis. So I just quickly go through the definitions and you will have an idea of uh, what object in this category looks like. Um, the monoidal product is also defined in a similar way. So I take product of the underlying object and then I define a new of ellipses on the product. And yeah, so in the end, I would obtain a braided, uh, a braided monoidal two category. So what I show in my recent work is that if I consider braided two functor between braided multifusion two categories, then I can prove that this braided cent centralizer is itself again a multifusion. And if I specialize to the case of identity two functor on a braided multifusion two category, yeah, so here A should also be a frank A. Then uh, I get a sibit, I get a selectic um, multifusion two category, and it's called the selectic center of A. So, so now we have defined what is monoidal centralizer and what is braided centralizer. I want to go into slightly different direction. So I, I want you to recall what is fusion one categories. So instead of considering them as categories with some you know, extra algebraic structures on top of that, now we can view them in, with a two categorical point of view. So they are algebra objects inside this two category of linear categories. And in fact, uh, there are multiple layers of structure. So if I just start with a monoidal category, I can add some braiding and I get a braided monoidal category. Or I can ask it to be have some rigidity conditions. So the dual exists. Then what I get is multifusion category. And from multifusion to category to fusion to category, we require unit to be simple object. Right. So I want to generalize the, the various structures here to algebras in an arbitrary monoidal to category. So that is a goal. So to, to do that, I need to first tell you what is an algebra in 
uh, monoidal two category, right? It turns out that, well, to, to make the discussion simpler, I, I assume my monoidal two category is semi-strict in the sense that uh, it's associator unitaries are all strict, but I have a kind of interchanger on the level of two morphisms. It is proved by Gorski that uh, you can always semi-strictify a monoidal two category. And so all the discussion here would not lose any generality. So what is an algebra? Well, I have an underlying object. So think of this as a kind of category. Then what else I should equip it with a monoidal structure, right? So it's a multiplication structure, which goes from A times A to A. And I should have a unit, which goes from the monoidal unit to A. And then I will have associators and left and right unitors. So this is exactly the data we need. And these data will need to satisfy Pentagon equation and triangle equation. So this is coherence condition eight and nine. So this, this defines what is an algebra. Then for braided algebras, well, I will equip it with an extra structure, which is called braiding. So in this general setting, if I have a semi-strict braiding monoidal two category, a braiding goes like this. So the source is I first take uh, a braiding of the ambient braiding monoidal two category. So I swap two copies of B and then I do the multiplication it should be related to the directly taking monoidal product. And this is recorded by this data called braiding beta. And this beta will satisfy hexagons. And this is exactly what coherence conditions 10 and 11 tells. And I will also have a triangle uh, coherence condition. So this is another notion called rigid algebra. So rigid algebra is the generalization of multifusion categories. So I will have an underlying algebra object A and to be, it turns out that for a, for a monoidal category to be multifusion, it is enough to require that your monoidal product has a bilinear left adjoint, uh, right adjoint. So this is the generalization. So I require my multiplication has a right adjoint. And so the unit is denoted by eta and co-unit denoted by epsilon. And these two isomorphisms for Binyazator, they are actually the condition saying this right adjoint is bilinear. So all these data together says a rigid algebra is an algebra whose multiplication has a bilinear right adjoint. So the, all the coherence conditions, so from 13 to 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, they are all just a coherence condition that is unpacked from the definition I just mentioned. So now we know a rigid algebra. What is a rigid algebra? A separable algebra is a rigid algebra where my co-unit admit a bilinear section. So this bilinear section gamma is part of data I need to have. And the Coherence conditions here just says it's bilinear section. So separable algebras, well, it turns out that Sorry, the separable the condition. Question? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, so the separable algebra, uh, uh, if we um, uh, if we just ignore all the uh, coherence, I don't know the coherence. Uh, can I summarize it as a, 
uh, uh, to have M and uh, M uh, right drawing M uh, such that it extends to a, a condensation monad in the sense of uh, uh, um, Johnson free. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Also, so this is just uh, that's precise, the, right? The the yeah, unital so, condensation monad of uh, uh, the unital condensation monad. Okay, so yeah. so no no coherence condition is missing. Uh, right. No it's, coherence think, condition is missing. I think. I see. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So yeah, I want to just summarize uh, using this diagram. So, so we just uh, quickly define a lot of notions, and they are all organized in this diagram. So the last notions I want to mention is the connectedness. So an algebra is called connected if its unit is a simple object in the home, one category. So this is just a translation of a fusion category, multi-fusion category being fusion, right? So, so now if I start with an algebra in an arbitrary multi-fusion two category, I can add a braiding, then I get a braided algebra or I can require it to have a bilinear right adjoint, then I have a rigid algebra, or I can require, if I require its unit to be simple, then I get connected algebra. And the rigid algebra, if it satisfies some further conditions, it's called separable. Okay. Well, in two back, uh, just that, just just what I mentioned. So, a separable connected algebra is a fusion algebra. Is a fusion category, and a connected separable braided algebra is a braided fusion category. So, although I add a lot of adge ad adjectives, they're really just a categorification of some notions we are really already very familiar with. So maybe now at this point, I, I, I try to give you some, well, non-trivial examples. So let's start with the braid diffusion two categories. So what is this? Well, this is dream field center of this fusion two category, right? So I just defined the dream field center as a special case of little centralizers. So, Davidoff and Nixish, they proved that uh, mm -hmm. separable braided algebras in this dream field center of mod RepG, uh, it consists of a braided multifusion category M together with a braided functor. So this braided functor goes from RepG into M. Well, what is connectivity? Well, connectedness here well, connectedness here means that my target M is fusion. So let's take a close look at this structure. So whenever I give you a braided functor from RepG to M, right, I can factorize it. it it's like I can factorize a, 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 a mapping between set to be a subjective one followed by an injective one. I can also do the same. So I will first factor my RepG uh, subjectively onto another braided category, which turns out has to be rep edge for some subgroup edge determined on up to conjugacy. And then I will have an inclusion, an embedding of rep edge into M. So the second map well, is also sometimes called braided extension. So I can fit it in, inside a more complicated diagram. So, so the braided extension is the, uh, you know, the, this morphism. And then I can ask a uh, Muga center and how do these two symmetric categories interact with each other, well, I will have a common intersection, which is rep edge mod n, where n is now a normal subgroup of edge. 
So they will fit together in this structure. So, okay, what do we do next? Recall that we, we, we have a equivalence of symmetric fusion to categories by equivalentization and de-equivalentization. So two rep G is equivalent to mod of rep G. This induces a braided equivalence between their dream field centers. But on the other hand, uh, fusion two categories, so two rep G and two vec G, they are Morita equivalent. So their dream field centers has to be the same. Um, and by this theorem of uh, Kong, Tian, and Zhou, we know that uh, the underlying two category of this dream field center is like this. So you can decompose these two categories into copies of two rep G, where this two rep of G is this, their, well, they range over centralizers of uh, conjugacy classes of G. Then, well, so, well, in summary, I show you this diagram. So what, what did, what did we just say? So I have two VEC G, which are G graded linear categories and the two rep G, right? They are linear categories with G actions. And I also have mod rep G, which are module categories over rep G. I said two vec G and two rep G, they are Morita equivalent. So I have a invertible bimodule, which is two vec between them. So it tells that their dream field centers uh, are the same. Their dream field centers is exactly the same, actually. On the right hand side, mod rep G and two rep G, they are equivalent as symmetric fusion, two categories. So the dream field center has to be equivalent as braided two categories. And this gauging here is, well, I, it, it's put it here to mean this equivalence of symmetric two categories, they are carried out by this construction of equivalentization and deequivalentization. So I have equivalence of uh, three dream field centers. So I, I also need to recall this notion of uh, G crossed braided fusion categories. So a G cross braided multi fusion category is, so I have a G graded finite semi simple category. So I have a G graded category like this. And then I put a compatible rigid monoidal structure. Actually, I just write out as a product, but you can also imagine there are also higher coherence data like associators, which should also be compatible with this grading. And then I also have a compatible G action. So it, it per, the G action permute different G graded uh, component uh, in, in the way that should respect this grading. And finally, I have a G crossed braiding. This G crossed braiding is a structure. So if I, if I go like, if I directly take product of something coming from G component and edge component, I have something in G edge component, but I can also first, I swap these two component and then I, after swapping, I use this G action on this edge component. And finally, I take the product. I will land in the first G, the same G edge component. And I want to have a structure that witness, witness that the two ways should be equivalent. So this data is called G cross braiding. Okay, using the classification of connected separable braided algebras, we mentioned earlier, so in, in the dream field center of mod rep edge, and I apply the 
if you still remember, I apply the equivalents of three different dream field centers. Then I obtain the following result. So I now I have a characterization of separable braided algebras in dream field center of two vec G. So what are they? So they are exactly G crossed braided multifusion categories. And since, well, if I only take look take a look at its identity component, then the G cross braiding restrict to an honest braiding on that. And I now I get a braided multifusion category with G action. So this AE, right, I can then it turns out that this AE actually it it's always of this form. So I will have a braided fusion category N with an edge action. Well, where edge is some subgroup of G. And then I take functors from G to N, which is edge equivariant. Then this resulting category is the identity component AE. So moreover, there, let's consider a normal subgroup N of H such that, well, I also want to find uh, an alpha, which goes from N to Picard, Picard group. Well, that's actually a three group. So it's Picard three group of N and that makes the following diagram commute. And I take the maximal normal subgroup N uh, with respect to this property. So actually, uh, what is important is only the first sentence, but I will use the, stru the structures here to state the next theorem. So a braided separable algebra is connected if the uh, data we just mentioned above, uh, I can use the data I just, I just mentioned to induce a G-crossed braided multifusion category in this way. And the original braided, uh, separable braided algebra is called connected if, it's, if the two things turns out to be equivalent. Yeah. So I start with a braided fusion, braided multifusion, well, G crossed braided multifusion category, and I get some data out of it, and then I construct a new G crossed braided multifusion two cat uh, one category, and it's called connected if what I started with is the same as what I get in the end. Okay. And finally, we can turn on the twist. We can turn on the pentagonator of focal cycle. And we see the classification is actually similar. So the only different part is, yeah, now I have pi, right? So pi will restrict it to my subgroup H to give me a focal cycle on H. So in particular, it give me a morphism of three group from edge to into this, well, three times the looping of a multiplicative group of my ground field. And the condition that uh, now, I, now I need my alpha to satisfy this condition. So not only I need this, uh, not only I need this square to commute, I also need this square and this square to commute. Well, this square commute automatically. So, so Picard of N can actually be built out of these two part of data. So it's actually, it's one of these uh, white hat tower of higher groups, but, uh, this triangle commute will give me a condition on this row. 
So it's it's a it's a kind of ask some group cohomology to vanish. Yeah. So the the connectedness in this case is also uh well is also in similar. So say from this set of data, I can induce another G crossed uh, pi twisted braided multifusion category, and it's connected if, if and only if it's equivalent to the original one. <laughs> Okay, now we have considered uh, different examples of algebras in two categories. Now let's look at modules. So modules, they are also very familiar objects uh, which need to be categorified to two categories. So I will have an underlying object M and an A action and well, think of this M as module categories and A as a monoidal category. Then the coherence data I need is I will have associator and the right unitor. So this is exactly the data new and data row. And then those coherence data would satisfy pentagon and triangle equations. And similarly, we can define module one morphisms and module two morphisms uh, with various compatibility conditions. So I will skip a little bit. So what is important is that after define all these notions, they, they form a two category. So I get a two category of right A modules for any algebra A inside a monoidal two category. And if this two category itself is a fusion two category, is a melt fusion two category is actually enough. And and I require A to be separable, then its category of modules is a finite semi simple two category. Finally, let me define local modules. So local modules is defined over braided algebras. So given a braided algebras and a uh, right modules over the algebra, the I, I need an actual piece of data which, which I called Holomni. So Holomni goes like this. So I first exchange M and B and exchange again. So this is like I do a, a double braiding and I apply the B action. It should be the same as I apply B action directly. And this data would, I require it to satisfy the two, three different coherence conditions. So this is coherence condition one and coherence condition two and the other one, which is related to unitality. Okay. And similarly, I define local modules one morphisms and local module two morphisms. And then in the work I joined with uh, T-Bolt, we proved that, well, first they form a two category. Secondly, if I require my algebra to be separable braided and my ambient two category to be braided multifusion, then the two category of local B modules is braided multifusion again. If the ambient category is fusion and my separable braided algebra is connected, then the two category of local B modules is a fusion actually braided fusion to category. Can I ask a question? So, yeah, sure. Uh, can you summarize the key point of uh, why this module is uh, uh, is the Karubi complete or is semi-simple? 
Mm. Yeah. So to prove this uh, local module is semi-simple, we, well, we kind of prove this by hand. So I yeah. define local modules to be a right module with a holomy, right? Yeah. So to say there's two categories, Karobi complete, that means if I have a condensation monad on a local module, I, I want it to slip, split, right? But we already, well, assuming that you already know that uh, mod category of modules, category of right modules, they are Karobi complete. Assuming that, mm -hmm. then given a condensation monad of local B modules, you just take the underlying B modules and it will give you a condensation monad of B modules, which split. And then I show that <clears throat> on the split image, I can have a holomny, which is just constructed from the uh, uh, condensation monad data together with a holomny on the original thing. Then you show that it actually split. The splitting is lifted to local B modules. So that yeah. is how you show so, it is. Yeah. Karobi so, so basically what you're saying is that all this actually, what do you need to show is also all these local properties are sort mm. of uh, uh, compatible with the condensation procedure, right? You have the condensation procedures. You have any other things you added. That's automatically something. Some arrows parallel uh, uh, lifted. That that's the basic point, right? So then, uh, then uh, yeah, but I I won't really say it's automatic because the proof. Well, in the just in the diagrammatic level, it's kind of it's kind of tricky. It's it's okay. it's it's not really tricky. <laughs> so, it, but it takes a lot of time to prove that. I see. So, so that means that means yeah. that uh, you seem to suggest that uh, um, that summarization. Um, you want to say that summarization uh, is correct, but uh, now trivial to see. Um, yeah, it's a time-consuming task, but to when check. you're actually performing it, it's, well, yeah. you know where to go. You roughly yeah. know where to go, yeah. So is it, you, but so it's, it's you. what you were saying is that uh, that thing cannot be uh, uh, formalized in a more, um, a more, what is it? More compact way it, to to make it like a to 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 formulate a theorem. What kind of a properties can automatically uh this this thing will work? Uh, mm. Instead of checking it directly uh, using all this coherent diagram, that's really really complicated. Is Actually, I have can... a idea. I think if I have a correct foundation, then the proof would be well. It's actually a saying of gross standing that if you find a proof too complicated, that's because you don't have the correct definition. So <laughs> once you have the correct definition, mm -hmm. all the proofs should be trivial, kind yeah, of trivial. Could be, yeah. Could be, yeah. So sure. maybe the argument here is so far as the higher categorical foundations we have does not yet provide us with those powerful tools. So we still right. need to check some diagrams by hand. Yeah, but so this we we, we know the yeah. yeah, but we know that the yeah. correct coherence condition should always be some kind of canonical one. So you, you don't really have other choices. Usually, yeah. you only have uh, on each diagram on each step you have two moves you are you are allowed to perform, okay. and if you perform these two moves and in the end they should be you know joined together back again so mm -hmm. yeah it's a kind of suggestion that there's a choice the space of choice is uh, contractible so there should be a canonical way of doing this yeah okay thank you yeah thanks for the question any other questions before i move on 
Uh, can I also ask a question, uh, which I think which is uh, uh, related to the question of Kong Liang, uh, that uh, I think in the one, uh, well, in the fusion category case, sometimes we uh, prove uh, is uh, Carol being complete or it's semi-simple. We prove the home space and matrix algebras. So I think here, if we want to prove something semi-simple, we need to show uh, some home spaces, uh, a multi-fusion category. So is there any specific technique of proving that? Uh, I I can can you formulate your question again? So, yeah, uh, uh, in yeah, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm sorry that that uh some I think the question of uh, proving the semi simplicity in the two category case is to show that the end space of some object are fusion categories. Am I understand that correctly? Uh, yeah, I, I think that is correct. Yes. So actually by definition that implies, so a finite semi simple two category is a two category whose, well, it's locally finite semi simple, which means every home space, home category is finite semi simple and every endomorphism category is multi-fusion. Is that what you want to say? But, uh, uh, Yes, so yeah, if but, but why don't some... you want to prove if you have a like two category at your hand and you want to prove it's finite semi simple? Usually, you don't start with definition because it's it's difficult to check actually. So usually, what you will the, the, the technique is to show that you can represent that two category as modules of some separable algebras over some other two category which you know already is multi-fusion i see yeah mm -hmm. it's a kind of uh, ostrich theorem yeah then, so, then you so use the point... result of the t vote and to show that it's already multi-fusion finite semi simple yeah i see uh -huh. thanks yeah yeah, if you drop the linear condition, maybe it's a bit more difficult. Yeah, but in this linear setting, you can have this two ostrich theorem to really powerful theorem to help you to prove a lot of categories are finite and simple. Okay. Um, now let's move on to our, maybe the, yeah, do I have half an hour left? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah, let, let me move on to the next next topic, is, which is Lagrangian algebras. So it might be also interesting for physicists. Mm, so the name is borrowed from its cousin in one categories. So uh, a connected Lagrangian, well, a Lagrangian algebra is just a connected separable braided algebra um, whose category of local modules are trivial. So I require the category of local modules is equivalent to two vec. So in, in, the, in the work of uh, me and uh, t Bolt, we proved that our notion of local modules uh, reproduce a notion defined by Davidoff and Nixage called braided module categories. So, yeah, so if I consider a braided fusion category, they are uh, braided separable algebras in two back. So I can construct the category of local modules on that. And it turns out to be equivalent to the dream field center of mod B. And on the other hand, well, I, uh, we say a braided fusion category is non-degenerate, which means that its Muga center is trivial. Um, and de Kopitz showed that this condition is true if and only if the dream field center of this monoidal 
two category is trivial. And then we find that Lagrangian algebras in two vec, they are exactly non-degenerate weighted fusion categories. So Lagrangian is in this sense is a non-degeneracy condition. And that actually it's interesting that usually we, we look at Lagrangian algebras inside a uh, non-degenerate weighted fusion categories. And well, uh, as it turns out that they are itself Lagrangian in a two category. So there is this nesting of structures in this situation. So, um, Thibault and I also proved this property called, I call the invariance on the change of basis. So the setup is, so I have uh, two braided algebras, A and B, and a uh, braided algebra one morphisms F going from A to B. Then I can endow B with a local A module structure. So this procedure is canonical and this braided algebra structure descend to a braided algebra structure in the category of local A modules. So now B can either be think of as a braided algebra in categories of local A modules, or it's just a category well, in the original category. And we prove that actually their category of local modules are equivalent. So it's actually, I change basis from A to B and it, it is invariant. And this lemma has an important corollary that now I can characterize Lagrangian algebras in dream field center of mod B, right? Because Lagrangian algebras, well, what, what are they? They are rated algebras in uh, dream field center of mod B whose local modules is trivial, but that implies that uh, this N is, well, this N is itself non-degenerate. So Lagrangian algebras in dream field center of mod B is just uh, a braided functor from B to some non-degenerate uh, braided fusion categories. And then I use this equivalent. So, okay, now we know Lagrangian algebras in Dreamfield Center mod B. So in particular, we know Lagrangian algebras in Dreamfield Center of mod rep G. And I will play the same game to use there, uh, use the structure there to find Lagrangian algebras in uh, Dreamfield Center of two vec G. So we already showed that. Well, we I already showed you the classification of connected separable braided algebras. So they are classified by this set of data. So H is a subgroup of G. N is a normal subgroup of H. And this curly N is a braided fusion category and rho is H action on N and alpha is uh, N cross the extension of this curly N. Well, this set of data determines a Lagrangian algebra if and only if uh, this normal subgroup is just H itself. And this braided fusion category curly N need to be non-degenerate. And the Lagrangian algebras in the twisted case is actually very similar. I also need uh, N to be the subgroup edge and the braided fusion category curly N is non-degenerate. It, it is just in the twisted case, I have some extra vanishing cohomological data vanishing conditions on on the data on this set of data but the the condition of being lagrangian is actually the same 
okay, well, we now know what Lagrangian algebra is. What does that, what is that good for? It's actually give us a classification of so-called bosonic fusion two categories. So a fusion two category is called bosonic. If, if I consider omega C, so omega C means I take the endomorphism category of the monoidal unit. So omega C where C is a fusion two category is a braided fusion one category. So I can take its muga center. So its muga center is a symmetric fusion one category. And we say C is bosonic, it is symmetric. One category is Tanakian. So it is, it is equivalent to rep G for some finite group G. And de Kopet showed that actually every bosonic fusion two category is Morita equivalent to a bosonic strongly fusion two category. So, I mean, so every such, if a C fusion two category C satisfies this condition, then it is Morita equivalent to two vec G pi, the familiar friend we've seen many times in this talk. And in particular, the Morita equivalence implies that their Dreamfield center are equivalent as braided cat two categories. Well, uh, to get to get the classification of C, now we only need to know that uh, C can be well fusion two category can be recovered from their Dreamfield center. Well, how do you recover that? Well, you will need this construction called full center. So every fusion two category C is equivalent to modules over full centers inside its uh, Dreamfield center. And this full center, well, it turns out to be a Lagrangian algebra. So this story is actually familiar if you have seen it in one categories. And finally, combined with the classification of Lagrangian algebras in Dreamfield center of two vac G pi, uh, we know classification of bosonic fusion two categories. So this is why it's kind of interesting to look at Lagrangian algebras in two vac G. Okay. If there is no question, I let me continue to, as I promised in my uh, abstract, I, I listed some of the uh, important properties of local modules. But yeah, but may, maybe it doesn't really fit into the previous discussion. So I put them here in the end. So since I still have some time, I can explain them in a more detailed way. So the first thing I want to mention is that, so there, there are two notions I introduced in this talk. One is local modules over braided algebras. Another is braided centralizers. So, they're introduced together with monoidal centralizers at the beginning. The reason I introduce them is that actually I showed in my recent works that local modules is a special case of braided centralizer. And which centralizer of it? Well, whenever I have a braided algebra, separable braided algebra in a braided nozzle fusion two category, I can consider three modules. So three modules in priori, it give me a monoidal two functor from well curly B to category of B modules, right? I send every object to the three B modules like this. Well, it turns out that this monoidal two functor lift to Dreamfield center like this. So, 
two MP here means I flip so braiding the direction of braiding. So the underlying monoidal structure is actually the same. So that is why I don't put something here. But when it's when it lifted to the drink fuel center, you have actually two different ways. So here I choose to lift using the reversed braiding. So for every low free B, free B modules, um, I induce a half braiding using using the data of this free module functor, two functor. And I show that the centralizer of this Radio two functor is exactly local B modules. So interpreted in the other way, what I say is local modules centralize free modules. Right. So whenever I have a local B module, so it's a right B module together with a half braiding, well, sorry, a holomny, then I use this data to equip M with a half braiding like this. So now I get an object in Dreamfield Center of mod B. And well, the image of this M, it centralizes everything coming from B. So it centralizes every local B modules. And this is actually organized into this half synopsis data. So M would actually centralize every uh, free, free B modules like this. Another property I proved, um, which is, I was, uh, it's, a, it's actually a phenomenon that is new in this two categorical setting, is uh, reciprocity. So given a separable braided algebra B inside this braided multifusion two category curly B, I can consider this construction. So I take B and I kind of integrate it on circle. So write it out, I mean, I have two copies of B and since B is a BB bimodule, I can view them as so I have a B which where B time D acting on the right and another copy where B times B acting on the left. And I form the relative tensor product of that. The resulting thing is braided again. And this is separable braided algebra. And well, and now I have a canonical one morphism going from B into this enveloped, you know, S1 enveloping of B. It's this all good. Now, the observation is, well, using this invariance of change of basis, we just uh, mentioned a few slides ago. So maybe it's good to recall. So, right, we show that there is the equivalence of uh, so whenever I have a morphism of braided algebras, right, I can equip the target with a local A module structure. So the situation here is, so I now I have a braided algebra one morphism from B into this S1 enveloping. So this S1 enveloping is lifted to a braided algebra in category of B local B modules. Then I form its category of modules, and it turns out to be the same as category of B modules. What does that? Well, what? Okay, a lot of Bs flowing around, but what? Uh, what is this saying? Is this? So, uh, it's like in monoidal one categories. Whenever I have a module. Uh, I have an algebra A. Uh, its category of A modules is equivalent to 
category of uh, AA bimodules in category of AA bimodules. So it's it's kind of similar to this one categorical case. So this reciprocity implies that the original pre-diffusion multifusion to category B is equivalent to I first take a uh, category of local B lo local B modules and inside this braided multifusion two categories, I take the local modules over it as an enveloping and I get back. So it's like I have a, a multifusion one category and a module category of that and I take Morita Du, and I can go in back by taking uh, some algebra in the Morita Du, right? And this algebra in the Morita Du is the enveloping algebra. So we are having a similar situation here. So using this reciprocity, uh, we, we show that uh, why well, I have a double centralizer theorem in this case. So the free B modules and local B modules, they centralize each other inside the Dreamfield center of mod B. And this, this means that if I consider their product, so their product going inside this Dreamfield center of mod B and I take Brady centralizer of the entire thing. I just get the selectic center of B. So as a corollary, if my braided multifusion to category is non degenerate, which means its selectic center is trivial, then uh, then I can factorize Dreamfield center of mod B as product of free modules and local B modules. And in particular, if this, you know, if this uh, B, if this spread separable algebra is a trivial algebra, <clears throat> then I obtain this factorization of curly B itself. So whenever I have a non-degenerate braided multifusion two category, it's Dreamfield Center factorized as two copies of B. And I think it's the all I want to talk about. Yeah. Thank you for the attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? Um, I have a um, little puzzled by this result because um, 